Welcome to Trading Lounge and the US indices um, for the S&P 500 here. We've got two Elliott Wave counts, one bearish, one bullish, as you know. And this is the bearish count here where we have wave three here, an A wave, and then a B wave here made up of a smaller A, B and C as an A and a B, and five waves for the C wave. Uh, coming into play here for C of B and then looking for five waves down. So we're looking to be short if we get a break of the 2800 here. Otherwise, we'll be looking for long trades to the upside. But uh, let's just go in and have a quick look at this here on the intraday chart here. So um, I'm just extending it a little bit more now in terms of this wave two because last time we spoke we had wave two sitting here. It's not really going to affect our long trades at all here because we'll end up getting a better uh, a, a better position uh, here as well. So <clears throat> we can still look at this as wave one and two and three and four and five here for wave one. And in this case here, the 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 move up here would be looking at a 61.8%, but it has moved past that, but that's not not the end of the world either in that case. So um, what we are looking for here now is looking at this as an A wave and a B wave and a C wave. So we've got one more little push up to here. As long as it doesn't take out this high through here, then we're okay on and check that on the cash market. Um, of course, there will be a reaction from here anyway, um, and we'll look at the bullish count in a moment. Moment, but uh, just going on to the hourly chart here so we can look at all of this coming down as one two three four five here and then now we'll look at this as an a wave and a b wave and a c wave here this little move in here has um, only three waves so far so we've got one and two and three here so we'll be looking for four to pull back and then five to here so if that's going to be the case, then that will uh, end there. But <clears throat> I also want to have a look at the bullish count as well. And then we can look at um, all of this long and short trade here in more detail. Not to go long here because we've still got one more push to go up here. So I'll just move that out of the way here for the time being. And on the long side here, we've got, um, let's go to this chart. So we've got the S&P um, this is much the same. This is the same as the Nasdaq count, basically. So, a series of wave one and two, and one and two, and one and two here, and then looking for wave one to the upside and wave two back. So, in this case here, we're looking for more of a bullish count, and we'll look at this in a bit more detail as well. In fact, I'll just go to the two-hour chart. It'll just make it a little bit easier. So, um, yeah. Yeah, wave one, wave two, wave one, ABC this case, because last time we counted this down as one and two and three and four and five. So that counts well. And this counts also as well as well as uh, as an A and a B and a C for the A wave, an A and a B and a C for the B wave and down. So um, you can look at this in two different ways. So that's why it's making it a little bit uh, little bit tricky and, and longer to, to work out. Now the move up here does appear to be bullish, um, even though I've counted it as, as an A and a B and a C before. Um, I'm looking at it being bullish because um, uh, because it's moved past its 50-60% retracement level. Well, I see retracement levels in... I see, I see them quite simply. I see them in... I see it like this, is when a market moves moves down like this, then it will have its first consolidation here of waves one and two, or A and B, and the same here. So there's this block here, and there's this block here. So in this case here, the market's moved up and it's come back and tested its support here. And it's basically moved through this block here, hasn't it? You know, so that's the first part. The second one is going to be reacting from here. So it's going to react from here anyway. But I can count one and two and three and four and five up here for five waves. I've still got one more little wave to go. and We'll look at that shortly. Um, but then this would pull back as an A and a B and a C here. And then so the long trade, once this moves up here, then moves back down, then we could go long or short here, right? But you could be trapped. So the safe trade is to wait for this market to move up here, react from the highs, get pushed back down roughly into this space here, and then find support on the 2850 after that, and then you can go long from there. I've just got it on this particular high here um, as an A and a B and a C wave there. Um, so, yeah, so... 
take a good look at that picture there. So we want that to finish up here and then fold back and then push up and use any of these highs to uh, trade long on. In fact, what we'll do is we'll just move this one over here as well. Um, so normally we would just go long down here as well, but because we've got the bearish count, we just could get trapped within that space. So we need to be a little bit mindful. We would go short if this, um, this number here, this is group one here, this is I mean, in the bigger picture, when we look at the daily chart, would go short if the market had breached this level here, the 2800 area here. But we can go in before that, and we can go when we look at group one here of the 2800, which is 10, 20, and 30. If this number here, the 2820, becomes the retested resistance, it can spike down like this and then go back up and find support and move up. But if it locks under this level here, then it's going to be pulled back down to this number here, and then we'll, because of the count, we can expect it to move. Uh, lower from that point there as well. Um, so let's just look at the tick chart here for a moment. So with the tick chart here, this is the low here. We can count this up here as, as one and ABC for two there. And then we can count this as one and two and three and four and five here for wave three or the A wave and then an A and a B and a C for wave four or the B wave. But the important thing here is that we can see that we've made a new high above here. So this move up here, that would be wave one. If I could just borrow these now, that would be wave one. That would be wave two. That would be wave three. This would be wave four here. It may not be finished, but it's uh, at least halfway through if not finished. And then wave five over here for this for this wave five of one here, or it could be wave C of two here. Okay, either way, um, it doesn't matter that much for the time being, um, because what will happen after that once we get to this point here, which I'm just going to save, um, once we get up into this, probably this this is group two here. So, so let's just go over this the. The number 800 here is a minor trading level, and the next degree below that is sub-level. So 1, 2, and 3 is group 1, and then the midpoint, and then group 2 here, 65, 72, and 80. And then we go up to the to the uh, higher level here of uh, 29. But And these are just the Fibonacci numbers of 1, 2, 3, 5, and 8, except with the trading levels, we've got a few more little levels in there. So in this case, we've got group 2. But whichever way you look at it, it's quite handy, really, because when you're looking at 100 points across here, then you can break it down into the halfway mark, which is good. And then you can break it down into uh, this third here of group 1, and then this area here of group two and the more that you do that then the more that you understand each one of these <coughs> numbers <coughs> so we would use normally if we were confident in our long trade then we would use the 2800 and then the 10 the 20 and the 30 to build into long trades we know there'll be a correction of the 50 but if we get support on that well then we'll go along again um, and the same coming down here as well um, so they become very valuable because they break down the problem of the trend um, so very useful whichever way you want to look at it and use it um, so um, in this case here we'll be looking for wave five to move up and then we'll be looking for an a and a b and a c so if i can just um i'll just borrow these here then i mean on the bullish side would look for an a and a b and a c wave back uh here um yeah so you can see that let's just have a look this a little bit closer so from this low here let's just say the 65 here well there's the 61.8 percent mark here which is at the 2830 so if the 2820 became the retested resistance then we would be probably a little bit too low for wave two not totally i mean wave two can in fact come all the way back down to this low here um, but cannot breach it um, but the norm is in that sort of 40 to uh, 62% uh, area, I use 72, so 40 to 72. 
Um, yeah, but with the levels, we know that if the 28 become 28 20 becomes a retested resistance, we know that the order flow is going to be volume is going to be pulled down to the 2800 at that point. So, so there you go. That's how that's how that will sort of play out. So we're still a little bit off um, being long or being short here. And the NASDAQ, I tend to look at that in terms of being more positive as well in the bigger picture here. Um, it's possible that we've got um, a top in play here, or you could call a top in play here. But I'm more looking at the bullish count here where we've got wave three here, an A wave, a B wave, a C wave, a D and an E for wave four. And then five waves here for wave one, back for wave two and then up for wave one and back for wave two. I know that we could put wave four under wave C here and then have this as wave one and two and a long third wave here and a fourth wave here and a fifth wave here to make the top of wave one here and then have this as an A wave and a B wave and a C wave come down here further. But then that would come into the bearish count and we can just handle that um, as we see fit and we'll look at that in a moment but this is not such a bad count so this little move up here we can look at wave one being there as well so just coming into the four hour chart and bringing this back a little bit um, wave one here wave two here we can have wave one here um, we can also have wave one uh, sitting here as well um, I'm not quite sure which is the best way to, to look at that but it doesn't matter because it's a past past now but um, yeah this counts up here as wave one and this always had the better bullish count because this moved back down through here um, where the S&P could count five waves down through here this one could really just count as three waves here um, you know if we call this um, an A and a B and a C here then we can look at this being wave one and back for wave two here it has pulled back quite a long way um, I don't know if we've got it on the hourly chart, yeah. So, so an A wave, a B wave, and a C wave here. Um, as such, I suppose there's different ways to count that as well. Um, we could probably count this as the A wave here, then uh, B wave here, then wave one and two here, and three here, and four here, and five here. But this doesn't end in th end in three waves and not five waves. Um, so. We are short up here with this, and you may have been out here already for this, but then we had the, um, the stop sitting over here last time we spoke, but I would like to bring it down to here now because the thing here is that um, it, be, it appears that we've got three waves here, so, that's correct. so that means we should take out this top here. Okay. Um, the other point here is that this is in three waves here. We may end up getting this as an A wave, a B wave and five waves up for a C wave here and then fail down here so that's possible as well so we go up for wave five and then we fail and we come down through here so if that's going to be the case then we can short below the 7350 here this little area here um, we're on top of group one we're testing group one at the moment um, so uh, yeah on the positive side of things then we can look at this as um, well, wave one here, an A wave, a B wave, and a C wave for wave two, up for wave one, A, B, C for wave two now. So I could probably just bring these over to here, update that a little bit here. It fits quite nicely as an A, B, C here. So then we would need to look at this one, two, three, four, five here as wave one. So in this case here, if we look from this low here of one and two, and three and four and five here once we get to here then we would look at this the same as the US markets having an ABC correction and then a move up from there so in that case um, don't need that long one just here that's to go long so we can put that over here we'll put it on top of that one there how's that so currently we're still short at the moment from here and yes you may have gotten out and all the rest of it but I've just bringing the stops down just being s slow with this um, yeah and you know maybe we could wait for the fifth wave here and then bring the stop I mean that's another probably even better way of doing it bringing the stop down further but I don't want it getting away on us either you know what I mean I want to lock it in there so I will lock it in then we can just go short again 
here but if you wanted to sort of dance around a little bit well then you can bring that red stop here um, down on top of this second high here so allowing that to finish up and then allowing it to move down, come back and retest that supply, and then move down and bring the stop onto there. But otherwise, we want to be looking to go long um, on this point here. And of course, if that just shoots straight up here, then um, you know, and moves up, say through this trend line here, you know, nice and clear. And the trend line situation too is that when a market moves through uh, any any resistance, it's it's um, if I can just draw this over here, then the market will come up and hit it, come back and then go up in there and check it and then come back and check it and then move off. So if that occurs in this space here, then you want to be long from that point. OK, um, all right. OK, I'm just going to leave it at that. I hope that helps. Thanks for tuning in. Much appreciated. Cheers.